three engineers met weekly with their families for a barbecue. It soon turned into a frenzied competition as to who could light the charcoals fastest. By lighting the charcoals, I don't mean just getting a fire going. We're talking white hot coals ready to put the meat on. Well, one engineer finally blew the competition away when he managed to do it in three seconds. And you might wonder, how can you accomplish that? Well, if you promise not to do that at home, I'll let you know. It involved an ignition device, a 10-foot pole, and liquid oxygen. And for me, the Christian classics, those great devotional writings from the past 2,000 years, have often served as liquid oxygen to my sometimes cold heart. I don't mean to be critical or cynical, but sometimes when I look left or when I look right, I'm not particularly inspired by what I see in the pews. There's often a spirit of defeatism or discouragement. I don't see that passion for the Lord, the desire to really lay hold of all that He would have for us, or that river of life out of which devotion and ministry flows. But when I look back, say to the seventh century and read the words of John Climacus who wrote The Ladder of Divine Ascent, an Eastern classic for orthodoxy. Or when I go to the 14th century and read the sermons of Johann Thaler, words that Martin Luther called pure theology. Or travel through the Middle Ages and visit with John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila who talked about intimacy in prayer in a way I'd never thought of prayer before or even the 17th century when John Owen talks about the mortification of sin, how we can attack sin before it attacks us. I find an inspiration I've never known before that I'm very grateful for. And that's what I'd like to encourage you to do as well. And it's what inspired me to write Thirsting for God, which seeks to gather the wisdom of the Christian classics, take the main themes of what they write about and bring it into our modern experience today. Now, if you were to talk to any of these writers about particular points of doctrine, they would disagree on quite a bit. But when it comes to talking about our relationship with God, for instance, why do so many Christians go through a time of, of great feeling toward the Lord and then go through a desert time? Or instances like, why do they speak of the discipline of the remembrance of death? Why is that so valuable? to keep our spiritual life online? Or even, how can I face temptation ahead of time? And, and why is humility considered such a key element of the foundation of a healthy Christian heart? They speak with one voice on these things, and I've sought to bring those voices together, really to encourage two different groups of people. One would be those Christians who maybe have never even thought about reading the devotional classics and, and maybe thirsting for God going through it. There'll be one or two writers that you really find yourself resonating with and you like to go on your own and pursue them individually. Others might be those, and in fact, some pastors and leaders have talked to me about this saying, Gary, I, I don't know that I'd ever do the work of going through the Christian classics, but I'm glad that you did so I don't have to. And when I'm thinking about what do the classics say about a particular topic or where can I get some quotes for this or that to, to flesh out what I'm saying for today, uh, they find that thirsting for God is a very helpful guide. So if, like me, you found yourself looking left and right and not really finding the inspiration you need and desire, consider with me looking back and find how they help us to look up to the one who fills our souls like no one else as we live a life of thirsting for God.